Did you know that Google's original motto was, don't be evil? This phrase was meant to remind everyone working at the company that great power comes with great responsibility. Google scrapped this motto in 2018, and this inspired a cryptocurrency project called Stax to adopt the motto, can't be evil. Rather than trust that tech giants will play fair with the internet and all its data, Stax is creating a new decentralized internet on Bitcoin, where users have complete control over their data. The crazy thing is that the internet of Stax doesn't modify the Bitcoin network, and the users who secure it with the STX token earn Bitcoin as a reward for doing so. If this sounds too good to be true, then today's video about Stax is just for you. Before we get stacking, there are some disclaimers that need unpacking. If you're looking for financial advice, I'm afraid you won't get any from me. That's because I'm not a financial advisor. I do educational crypto content for free. If this is your first time seeing my face, my name is Guy and welcome to my place. This channel is packed with enough quality crypto content to give you a heart attack. Coins, tokens, DeFi and NFTs. There's no crypto topic that's too big or small for me. If this is what you've been looking for, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to ensure you get more. You can use the timestamps in the video timeline to get around and skip ahead to any juicy topics you've found. I'd love it if you watched from start to finish because the YouTube algorithm gives lots of weight to your minutes. That's enough of that. Let's get on with Stacks. Stacks was founded in 2013 by computer scientists Munib Ali and Ryan Shea at the University of Princeton. Stacks is the product of Munib's doctoral thesis, which detailed a framework for an internet that could be built around the Bitcoin blockchain. This framework is called Blockstack, and this was also the original name of the project until it rebranded to Stacks in October last year. The New York software company that developed Stacks also rebranded from Blockstack PBC to Hyro Systems PBC, and I'll explain why that's significant later on. At the conceptual level, you can think of Stacks as being a layer 2 blockchain for Bitcoin like the Lightning Network. The Stacks blockchain also uses a novel consensus mechanism called proof of transfer that leverages Bitcoin's proof of work consensus for security. Proof of transfer is conceptually similar to proof of stake as it involves stackers who stack the STX token on the Stacks blockchain and earn Bitcoin as a reward. This Bitcoin comes from Stacks miners who commit BTC to the Stacks blockchain for a chance to mine a block on the Stacks blockchain and earn STX. The BTC they commit goes to stackers as stacking rewards. The reasoning behind this consensus mechanism is that each BTC coin essentially represents mining power from Bitcoin's proof-of-work blockchain. Everything that happens on the Stacks blockchain is verifiable on the Bitcoin blockchain. This doesn't modify or strain the Bitcoin network because this information is just regular BTC transactions made by Stacks miners. In addition, the Stacks blockchain is smart contract compatible and uses a specialized coding language called Clarity that was created with the help of Algorand. Instead of storing the data from its smart contracts on chain, smart contract data generated by the Stacks blockchain is stored off chain in a decentralized storage system called Gaia. All data generated by a user on the Stacks blockchain is assigned to their unique identity, i.e., their wallet address. Only the holder of the wallet address can access its associated data stored on Gaia and give permissions to decentralized applications and third parties to do the same. Now, this only scratches the surface of how Stacks works, and if you want to take a closer look under the hood, you can do just that by watching my first video about Stacks, and the link for that is, as ever, in the top right. Although the Stacks blockchain has technically been live since late 2019, it wasn't until mid-January this year that Stacks became a finished product. This was marked by the release of Stacks 2.0, which enabled proof of transfer mining and smart contract functionality on the Stacks blockchain. It turns out that how proof of transfer works in practice is pretty damn complicated, but it seems to be lucrative for both miners and stackers. To briefly recap, the STX token has halving cycles similar to Bitcoin's. 
For the first four years, the block reward on the Stacks blockchain is 1,000 STX per block. With the current market price of STX, this works out to just over $2,000 per block, plus any transaction fees in that block from the Stacks blockchain. Now, if my calculations are correct, the amount of BTC you'd need to commit to the Stacks blockchain to mine a block is currently about $1,500. That's about a $500 profit in STX, which is not too shabby. That said, the amount of BTC that needs to be committed changes over time, since the likelihood of getting chosen to mine a block is proportional to how much BTC you have committed relative to other miners. Moreover, there is a risk that the BTC you commit as a miner could appreciate during the 16-hour time frame it takes to receive your rewards in STX. The value of the STX you're waiting for could also fall during that time. Now, on the bright side, the hardware requirements to mine STX are extremely low. And if you're interested in mining on stacks, I'll leave a few resources for you in the video description. If you're more of a stacker, the amount of STX you have to stack to earn the BTC being committed by miners is likewise based on how much STX other stackers are stacking. Right now, the minimum amount of STX you need to stack is 90,000. That's worth more than 180 grand. Thankfully, there are ways that you can stack less STX using exchanges and stacking pools. Unfortunately, this delegated stacking is not yet available in the native stacks wallet, but the Boom wallet and Xverse wallet are currently working on integrating stacking pools. While the rewards for stacking are also not entirely clear, they seem to add up to about 10% in BTC relative to the dollar value of STX you're stacking. If you plan on stacking, just be aware that there is a 16-day lockup period. I'll leave resources for stacking in the video description as well. Shortly after the Stacks 2.0 upgrade went live, about half a dozen companies signed up to become miners on the network, such as Foundry Digital and Blockdemon. In February, Stacks announced the winners of their Clarity Smart Contract Challenge. The winner of the advanced category was a project called Arcadio DAO, a clone of MakerDAO that is looking to bring crypto collateralized stablecoins to the Stacks blockchain. The winner of the basic category was a Magic 8 Ball, which will generate randomness for the Stacks blockchain in addition to eight predictions for people into superstition. By March, stackers had earned more than $5.5 million in Bitcoin rewards, which might have been what enticed the chief strategy officer of CoinShares to join the Stacks Foundation. A few weeks later, the Stacks Foundation announced its Accelerator program, which provides funding and guidance to any projects building on Stacks for the first three months. One of the people who will be guiding projects building on Stacks is Chainlink founder Sergei Nazarov, who seems to have a very close relationship with Stacks founder Munib Ali. The Stacks Accelerator complements the Stack Foundation's grants program, which has reserved over 30 million STX for those contributing to the growth of the Stacks ecosystem. In April, the STX token listed on the South Korean Upbit Exchange, which was apparently the sole driver behind its sudden 2x move. According to Coindesk, this is because South Korean traders are crazy for altcoins, and many of them are also attracted to the BTC rewards given by STX stacking. Speaking of price, it's about time we popped open the charts for STX. STX is up more than 10x since I covered it last November, so props to anyone who got in early. To be completely honest though, STX hasn't performed nearly as well as other altcoins, and its price action also looks quite bizarre. I suspect this is for two reasons. First, the distribution of the STX token is not very equitable. Even though the Stacks Explorer doesn't actually show you wallet balances, it's enough to know that no tokens were sold to the public during the Stacks ICO. The entirety of STX's initial supply was split between private investors, the Stacks Foundation, Hydro Systems PBC, and the project's founders. These STX tokens have a fairly aggressive vesting schedule, which is set to finish in October this year. Now, given how much STX has appreciated compared to its sale price, many of these tokens are probably being sold. When you combine this sell pressure with the sell pressure coming from Stacks miners, you need a lot of demand if you want prices to go higher. Now, in theory, this demand should be coming from those looking to stack STX and earn Bitcoin, but the costs required to do this solo are way too high, 
and pooling STX with a third party is neither safe nor convenient for the time being. What this means is that we might continue to see suppressed and sideways price action until the fall, unless improvements are made to stacking or new dApps create new demand for STX. However, there seems to be some hope on the technical analysis side. STX is printing either a bull flag or an ascending triangle on the daily timeframe. In either case, we will likely see STX spike by 50 cents over the next few days. The bearish news here is that when you zoom out on the weekly timeframe, you can see that people have consistently been taking profits at just above the $2 mark, as denoted by the tall wicks on top. This is support for my thesis that sell pressure from miners, VCs, and founders is suppressing the price action of STX. Now, if you want to learn how to do this with your favorite altcoin, be sure to watch my videos about technical analysis. And the first episode is hanging up there in the top right. In terms of a roadmap, Stax no longer has one, and that's because the community decides what comes next. Stax community governance is coordinated by the Stax Foundation, and all upcoming upgrades and milestones can be found on Stax governance GitHub repository. It appears that Stax is in the process of implementing fungible and non-fungible token standards, which are a prerequisite for serious smart contract functionality and user adoption. On that note, Stax has seemingly struggled with adoption despite having a solid project and raising nearly $100 million in funding. This is evident in the amount of stackers, which is fewer than 300 for this 16-day cycle. Now, this is concerning because these 300 stackers alone are stacking more than 30% of STX's circulating supply. According to Stacking Club, the next round of stacking will only see 250 of 3,200 stacking slots filled. Now, while I wasn't able to find any up-to-date statistics on how many miners there are right now, in a February interview, Stax founder Muni Valley mentioned that there were just 46 miners on stacks. Besides the economic implications of this, it also means that the stacks blockchain itself is fairly centralized. As far as I can tell, the real reason why stacks has had such a hard time so far is because of the SEC. The sale of the STX token in 2019 was actually the first cryptocurrency ICO to be sanctioned by the SEC in the United States, and the stacks team went above and beyond to make it happen. There's just one small problem, and that's that doing the STX sale by the book within the United States meant that STX was automatically designated as a security by the SEC. Without getting into the legal mumbo jumbo, one of the side effects of STX being classified as a security is that it cannot be listed for trading on cryptocurrency exchanges inside the United States. Given that almost all of Stack's infrastructure marketing and network effects are within the US, a lack of exchange support for the STX token makes it difficult for fans of stacks in the US to participate in its ecosystem as miners, stackers, or users. There is one caveat here, and that's that the stacks team has been working like mad to convince the SEC to change its classification of the STX token from a security to a currency now that Stacks 2.0 is live. While it wasn't clear to me why Stacks and Hyro Systems had rebranded in October, this makes a lot of sense when you consider the fact that this rebrand makes it easier for STX to be classified as a currency. A green light from the SEC seems to be the only thing preventing the buildup of institutional clients and investors in the United States from using Stacks and STX. Everything else already seems to be in place. Case in point, Coinbase already provides custody for the STX token, and multiple US exchanges have signaled their readiness to list STX once it's cleared by the SEC. Hyro Systems recently filed its final annual report with the SEC and has stated that it will no longer handle the STX token as a security. Now, whether the SEC feels the same way remains to be seen, but once these floodgates are opened, the adoption could be unprecedented. For starters, Stax is built around a cryptocurrency that is seeing massive adoption by institutions and investors. Stax already has hundreds of apps for things like decentralized video streaming, accounting, and health record sharing. Most importantly, institutions can trust the project because it was built in the United States by people from one of the world's top universities who held a token sale sanctioned by regulators. 
According to Stacks founder Munib Ali, the real value that Stacks will bring is sustainability to the Bitcoin blockchain. In 100 years or fewer, the last BTC will be mined. Now, many have argued that transaction fees alone will be enough of an economic incentive to keep the Bitcoin network going after that point. However, the fees for these transactions would need to be large, and the transactions would need to be frequent. If fees are large, there will be fewer transactions, and this would create a negative feedback loop that could kill Bitcoin. Munib argues that large and frequent transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain is exactly what the Stacks ecosystem will incentivize through its mining process. If he's correct, then Stacks might actually be what Bitcoin needs to maintain long-term security well into the future. If you want to learn more about what happens after all the Bitcoin is mined and a few of the other ways it could survive without transaction fees, I happen to have a video about just that. You know where to find it, and if you forgot, it's in the top right. Stacks is a cryptocurrency project that has struggled to get the attention it deserves. After all, who wouldn't want to earn BTC for securing a decentralized internet built on Bitcoin? It's a powerful proposition that should attract millions of people inside and outside of crypto, but unfortunately things seem to have played out a bit differently in practice. Even though proof of transfer is one of the coolest consensus mechanisms in crypto, you'd be hard pressed to find many people who are willing to trade their BTC for an altcoin under any circumstances. My suspicion is that most of the miners on stacks are institutions and not retail investors. Something tells me that people stacking STX aren't retail investors either. Stacks has by and large seen sluggish growth and many of the statistics around its adoption seem to have been exaggerated. Now, believe it or not, I don't blame the Stacks team for this. Ever since the project began, they've done everything by the book. And ironically, that seems to have been their biggest mistake. These days, most cryptocurrency projects opt to set up a company or nonprofit somewhere outside of the United States, build out their ecosystem, and then try and move into the US crypto market. It turns out that fighting your way out of regulatory red tape from within the United States is the more difficult alternative. I reckon. That's something the founders didn't know when they began back in 2013. The team seems to be pretty upset with the SEC and have been actively pushing for a currency designation since December. The recent statement that Hira Systems will stop filing with the SEC and handle STX as a security seems to be a show of force in this regard. Luckily for Stacks, the project has gotten a lot of attention from really big players inside and outside the industry, and mass adoption is literally just waiting to happen. The triple whammy would be the SEC granting STX currency status, Coinbase and other US exchanges listing STX, and STX's vesting schedule being over. I think it's very possible that this trifecta of events will happen later this year, and this could cause the fastest rise in price that a cryptocurrency has ever seen, besides Ponzi's on the Binance Smart Chain, of course. Until then, it will be up to Stacks and company to put the finishing touches on the blockchain they've been working on for over eight years. I, for one, will be watching closely. If you enjoyed today's crypto flick, I reckon you owe that like button a click. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, consider doing so and give that bell a ring too. This YouTube channel is just the tip of the Coin Bureau iceberg. Twitter is where I share my thoughts about the crypto market in real time. Instagram is where I answer your questions, and TikTok is where you'll find behind-the-scenes footage. The Coin Bureau Insider Telegram channel is packed with more daily market updates than you can handle, and my weekly newsletter takes that idea to the next level. It's stuffed with tools, tricks, tips, and other resources you can use to make this bull market your muse. If you want to support the channel, you can do just that by getting some merch from the Coin Bureau merch store that will make you as cool as a crypto cat. You can find your way to my official socials, Telegram channel, newsletter, and merch store using the links down in the video description. And you can find me in the next video you watch on this channel. If you haven't already watched them all, I hope you can survive until tomorrow. I'll see you then, my fellow crypto cavaliers.